Welcome to the discussion on Module 10, Discounting of Notes Receivable. So, kanina, i-diniscuss natin yung pledging, assignment, and uh, factoring of accounts receivable. So, uh, we will be dealing now on the last mode of receivable financing, which is the discounting of notes receivable. At the end of the module, we will understand the concept of discounting note receivable, distinguish yung discounting of note receivable with the recourse and without recourse, na kanina ay parang medyo na uh, pasadahan na natin yung without recourse, understanding discounting of note receivable accounted for as a conditional sale and with recognition of a contingent liability, understanding the discounting of note receivable accounted for as a secured borrowing. So essentially, andito pa rin tayo sa receivable financing dahil yung company is in a financial distress, in a, in a tight um, cash position, so gumagawa siya ng paraan to be able to become uh, more liquid, to be able to convert um, assets na hindi uh, gumagalaw into a uh, readily, uh, into being a readily convertible to cash, to be able to pay the liabilities falling due. Kasi dahil uh, uh, because of the delay in the receivable accounts ay uh, naaapektuhan yung credit standing ng company. So, one way is to discount your note receivable. So, pinag-uusapan natin ngayon is the note receivable. So, what happens when you discount a note receivable? A discount of note receivable up happens when the present value of the payment received from the note are less than its face amount. For example, meron kang notes receivable account ngayon na 5 million, pero dahil gusto mo siya sana na makolekta na yan ngayon dahil meron kang mga pagbabayarang utang, ay lalapit ka sa mga financial entity or banks to be able to pwedeng manghiram ng pera at gamitin security itong notes receivable or pwedeng ibenta itong notes receivable na ito. So, yun lang ang concept din ng discounting of notes receivable. So, parang factoring din ang treatment niya. So, these are usually sold with or without recourse. So, ang discussion na natin kapag without recourse ay kung halimbawa man na mag-falter in payment ang mga notes receivable mo ay wala nang habol sa iyo yung banko na pinagbentahan mo. Otherwise, yung kapag with recourse naman ay merong habol pa sa iyo yung banko kapag nag-falter in the payment yung mga uh, notes receivable holders mo. Okay. The recognition of a contingent liability arises kapag ikaw ay with recourse. Kapag kasi with recourse, pwede na hindi pag, pag hindi nagbayad yung mga uh, binenta mong notes receivable ay pwedeng ikaw ang kolektahin ni banko. So, it is proper na in your records, you recognize a contingent liability. It is an obligation to pay an amount in the future if an uncertain event occurs. So, you will be dealing with several terms. Let us have a... Uh, a Backgrounder on this, one is net proceeds. The value of the discounted note received from the endorsee, usually a bank or a financial institution. So kung magkano, halimbawa, binenta mo yan sa bank, magkano ba yan i-value nung banko o nung, o nung endorsee na pinagbentahan mo, yun yung net proceeds. Yun yung matatanggap mo na cash na gagamitin mo pambayad sa yung mga liability account. Next, the maturity value, the value due on the note on the time of maturity. So, alam mo na yan. Maturity date, the date of which the note must be paid. Principal amount that appears on the face of the note. So, kung mag, ano yung nandun sa notes um, receivable, nandun sa note agreement mo, sa promissory note, yun ang yung principal amount. The interest is the amount of interest on full term of the note. Kung magkano yung total interest on the full term. So, kung 3-year term yun, yung itotal mo yung interest for the whole 3-year term, yun ang interest mo. The interest rate is the rate shown, interest rate shown on the face of the note. 2%, 3%, 1%. Yan. Okay, let's have an example. A 500,000, 180 day, 10% note dated March 30 was received from a customer and discounted without recourse on May 30 at 12% discount rate. Okay, let us uh, look at how it is computed. So, meron kang 500,000, that is your principal. 180 day ang term ng note, 10% ang uh, interest niyan, ang date ay March 30, na-receive from a customer and discounted 
without recourse. So, pag without recourse, diniscount, binent, uh, yan ay diniscount or parang ibinenta mo sa iyong financial entity or sa bank o sa lender mo ay without recourse daw. So, hindi ka na pwedeng balikan if ever hindi magbayad yung uh, may-ari ng notes uh, receivable na yan. 12% ang discount rate on May 30. So, let us first compute. The step one is to compute for the maturity values. How do you compute for maturity value? The principal plus interest is your maturity value. Your principal is 500,000, the interest. Magkano ang interest niya sa loob nung kapag natapos yung 180-day period? Yung 10%, 10% na sinasabi dito, this is per annum. Remember ha, kapag nakakita ka ng rate na ganyan, uh, if the problem, if the problem is silent it it means it is in a in a annual figure or per annum ang basa mo diyan so itong 10% yan ay for 1 year or for 360 days so dahil ang period mo ay 180 days lang it is proper na gawin mo lang yang 5% or 10% divided by 2 or 10% times 180 over 360 so, what's your interest? 500,000 times 5% 5 is 25,000. So, what is your maturity value? So, after 180 days, ang value ng 500,000 mo na yan ay 525,000. Next, we compute for the discount. Ano, magkano ba ang discount rate? Sabi, 12% daw. So, 12% ang discount rate on May 30. The discount, how do you compute for the discount? So, kukuhanin mo yung maturity value, 525,000 times the discount rate na 12%. Since, ang kinukompute mo is at a one-year figure. Remember, itong 12% na tinatawag dito is also for one year. So, 12% hindi na magiging buo yan. Kasi dated March 30 yung promissory note, pero May 30 din discount. So, lumipas na yung... March, April, and May. So, merong 2 months na lumipas or 60 days na lumipas na dyan. So, anong gagawin mo? Ibawas mo yun doon sa period na 180. So, 180 minus 60 is 120. So, yun na lang ang magiging computation mo for your discount. 525,000 times 12% times 120 over 360 is 21,000. Yan ang discount mo for that uh, notes receivable. Next, we compute for the net proceeds. How do you compute for the net proceeds? The maturity value minus the discount. Diba? Maturity value, doon yung uh, value niya nung notes receivable na gusto mo sanang bilhin. Eh, sabi, may 12% na discount. So, ibawas mo yung discount for that. So, 525,000 minus 21,000 is 504,000 ang yung net proceeds. Next, we compute for the carrying amount of the note. Well, how do you compute for the carrying amount of the note? Uh, you get your principal, 500,000, and the accrued interest receivable. Ano yung accrued interest receivable? Ede yung uh, period kung saan from March 30 hanggang May 30 kasi nag-incur na yan ng um, interest. So, 500,000 times 10% times 60 over 360 is 8,333.33. So, ang carrying amount ng notes receivable mo on May 30 ay 508,333.33. So, the rule on discounting, if the carrying amount is greater than the net proceeds, there is a loss. If the carrying amount is less than the net proceeds, there is gain. Ibig sabihin kasi niyan, Yung net proceeds, yun yung matatanggap mong pera. Tapos yung carrying amount, yun yung value lang ng yung notes receivable. So kung mas malaki na natanggap mong pera, hindi meron kang gain. ba? Okay, in this example, how much is the net proceeds? The net proceeds is 504. The carrying amount is 508,000. So anong mas malaki? Ang mas malaki ay yung net proceeds mo. Ano? Ang mas malaki ay yung yung carrying amount. So, parang nalugi ka dyan. Ang carrying amount, 508,000. Ang net proceeds na natanggap mo lang ay 504,000. So, loss on note discounting, 4,333.33. Since this example, ito ba ay with or without recourse? Balikan natin. Ito ay without recourse. 
kapag without recourse, kapag nag-falter in payment ang mga notes receivable, ay hindi ka na pwedeng kolektahin ni banko. So, how do you recognize? Since this is a without recourse, walang contingent liability kasi hindi ka na pwedeng balikan. So, how do you recognize? You debit cash, 504,000 for the net proceeds. You you debit the loss on note receivable discounting 4,333.33 na na-compute natin on the previous this on the previous uh, on the upper uh, part of the module next note receivable 500,000 is credited because that is the uh, amount of the note receivable na yung binenta interest income 8,333 to recognize yung interest from March 30 to May 30 okay so, this is uh, the case kapag ikaw ay without recourse. Paano naman kapag ikaw ay with recourse? So, we will be using the same example. However, kapag with recourse, there are two uh, ways on how it can be accounted. Uh, first, kung yan ay conditional sale and next, if yan ay isang uh, secured borrowing. So, what is the difference? If the in the previous example, the note is treated as a conditional sale, the journal entry to record the transaction is you debit cash 504 for the net proceeds, loss on note receivable 4,333, credit note receivable discounted. So, gumagamit dito ng note receivable discounted as, as a contingent liability. Credit interest income. Mapapansin mo ka before, hindi gumagamit ng discounted dyan dahil uh, walang contingent liability under the without recourse agreement. Okay, if the note is paid by the maker in the date of maturity, o de i-eliminate mo lang ang iyong note receivable discounted, debit note receivable discounted, credit note receivable. Dahil i-eliminate mo ang iyong liability account at ang iyong receivable account. If the note is dishonored by the maker and the bank charge to the company 5,000. So, paano kapag hindi nagbayad yung may-ari ng notes, yung promissory note na yon, yung maker ng promissory note na yon, hindi niya inobserve yung pagbabayad dun sa financial entity na pinagbentahan mo, then you have to recognize na uh, ikaw na ang magbayad. Ikaw ang dapat na magbayad na noon sa yung um, sa sa financial entity na katransak mo on the discounting of the notes. So, you have to debit account receivable, 530,000, credit cash, 530,000. Sir, paano na-compute yung 530,000? That is 525,000. Kung matatandaan mo, balikan natin. 525,000 is the maturity value of the note. Ito yun. Bakit po naging 5,000? Kasi merong charge na 5,000 na sinasabi dito. At saan na yun? Balikan natin. Okay, the bank charge the company 5,000 ito. So, 525 plus 5 is 530,000. So, he have to eliminate also noticeable discounted and noticeable 500,000. Okay. Now, let's proceed with the secured borrowing. Assume again, the example above we said that the note is treated as secured borrowing, the entity shall be shall uh, the end the borrowing and uh, a secured borrowing the entry the entry shall be you debit cash 504,000 for the net proceeds kanina ang ginamit mo dito is the loss on note discounting 4,000 however under secured borrowing hindi ka gumagamit ng loss or gain on the discounting but recognized already as an expense so interest expense 4,333.33 credit you set up liability for note receivable discounted. Diba? Yan ang gagamitin mo, not the note receivable discounted under the secured borrowing. Ang ginagamit na account is the liability for note receivable discounted. Credit interest income, 8,333. What if the maker paid within the the due date or within the maturity or the ang gagawin mo lang is to eliminate the liability account debit liability for noticeable discounted 500,000 and then credit noticeable 500,000 paano kapag the liability noticeable discounted if the maker pay the bank oh, so, et, so itong discussion na ito is for the above figure
what if the note is dishonored by the maker? Ikaw ang magbabayad. Parang kanina lang, debit account receivable, credit cash. Then, you derecognize. You derecognize the liability. Debit liability for note receivable discounted and credit note receivable. So, it is important that you uh, determine whether a transaction is with or without recourse. Kung yaan ay, um, kung yaan ay with recourse, it is important to determine whether it is under a conditional sale or it is a uh, secured borrowing because of the recognition of the items. Yung expense, the liability accounts are important in prep, in the preparation of your financial statements in the books. So, I think that ends the discussion on discounting of notes receivable. I hope it helps you while you are uh, studying and analyzing the transactions under the discounting of notes receivable. Thank you.